Welcome to Understanding Voice over IP. My name is Eric Cole. In this course, we're going to tackle two main areas. One of them is getting started with the main components and jargon and buzzwords. That's part one. Part two is going through all of the different flavors of voice over IP. Everything from talking from one computer to another over the internet to PBX replacement. Another principal component of a voice over IP system is a soft switch. Now, what's the difference between a soft switch and a hard switch? Well, what is a hard switch? Well, a hard switch would be a central office switch or a PBX, like a, a DMS100 or a 5ESS central office switch. And what does a central office switch look like? A central office switch is a giant rack mount computer system. The first row of racks of shelves of That's cards the is going to have things like human machine interface and yeah, testing yeah. interface and hard drives and the processors. But all of the other rows of racks of shelves all have line cards. In Each them. one of those little cards is one telephone user. Think of it as the interface card in a PC, your yeah, internet card. Yeah. And it has an OE, which is the same as a, as a MAC address. Okay. So you map a MAC address to a telephone number, and it's physically connected to the frame where you're interconnected with a pair going out on the cable. Now, there's as many types of those as there are telephone servers. Is this all one DMS switch? This is CG5, one, one switch. This is one switch. There are rows of these things and row after row after row after row. After row. They're huge. Uh -huh. Like they take up a large room in a building. These over here go up there and they will go and terminate on the blocks we're going to see later at the frame. Okay. Because this is an LCM with uh -huh. the drawers, each pair connecting to a line card at the front for one customer. And this is one that telephone switch. The wires that run your telephone actually physically terminate on a line card module in traditional telephony and it puts voltage on the line, it does the ringing and it does the off hook detection and all of that sort of fun stuff. Now that's what we might call a hard switch if we needed to have a word for that. What's the difference between that and a soft switch? Well the whole idea with voice over IP is that the telephone is no longer plugged onto the telephone switch. The telephone is plugged onto a LAN. And so the cards that physically terminate the phone line, if you will now, are no longer part of the telephone switch. They're now part of a LAN switch sitting in a wiring closet somewhere. So what the telephone switch ends up being is some software running on a computer. A soft switch can run on a purpose-built computer, like one from Nortel or uh, Alcatel or Lucent or whatever they're calling themselves this month. Or it could run on general purpose hardware, like a Dell PC or hopefully one that's been hardened a bit. There are two main functions that a soft switch has to do, terminal control and call control. Terminal control consists of registration, admission, and status. Now those three functions used to be formally defined in a standard part of the H.323 series of standards. We're not using them anymore, th those standards, but those functions still have to be done regardless of what mechanism we're using to do them. Registration 
means that the telephone has to log on, if you will, to the soft switch and say, hello, I'm here. And the soft switch is probably going to say, well, is that really you? And it'll have to do authentication to make sure it's not an imposter or rogue telephone trying to log on to the system. Probably it will also tell the soft switch what its IP address is, and that will get recorded in a location database for the SIP protocol, which we'll talk about later on. Admission is deciding whether that telephone is allowed to make phone calls or not, whether it's admitted to the system. One reason why we might decide whether the telephone's allowed to make phone calls or not is whether you have to pay for the phone call. So no, that phone is restricted from making toll calls or you have to pay for long distance. Another reason for restricting whether a telephone can make phone calls or not, again, comes back to quality of service. If things start getting congested on the IP network, which means that the packets start getting delayed or even dropped, and so the call quality goes down, what is an easy way to improve that situation? Well, stop people from making any more phone calls, and then the circuits won't be as congested. So admission control can also be used for doing quality of service control as well. The third function is status. So we've got registration, admission, and status. Status would be whether the phone is in use or not, or as things progress, we're going to be able to have very sophisticated call disposition rules. You can fire up a user interface and type in there to say, well, based on who it is who's calling, and possibly what number they called or how they got to you, as to what happens with the phone call. So you could have a list of people that no matter what, they get through to you. And then you could have lists of people that no matter what, they always go to voicemail. And then you could have a list of other people. Maybe you get this off of a national spammers database, or actually it's spit. It'll be called spam over internet telephony. So out of the spit database is if any of these telemarketers are calling me, that always goes to a message that says, sorry, this line is no longer in service, never call again. <laughs> or you could have people sent off to a cell phone, or you could have them sent off to a website if they call you and say, this, sorry, there's no voice available, but you can read all this fun information that we have, these facts. So with call disposition rules, then the question of what is your terminal status becomes more of an interesting thing rather than just whether you're busy or not there or you are available. The other main function that a soft switch does is call control. And this involves address resolution, call setup, maintenance, and teardown, and also call accounting and call detail records.